the top end of the market, there's a new kind of pawnbroker. And we're prepared to offer you 125,000. <laughs> I'm having a flush. <laughs> Specialising in luxury goods. Supercars, jewellery, watches, fine wines, art, almost anything of value. If it's expensive, we want it. Love it. Based in affluent Surrey. Stunning. And London's famed jewellery district. Because you can really smell the money. Bankrolling the asset rich. Money brings contentment. But cash poor. I really, really want the money. This time... This is me with Lindsay Lohan. Jewellery fit for an A-lister. Brad Pitt bought a bracelet for Angelina Jolie from me. A rock and roll legacy. This guitar represents something of the Holy Grail. And will James sink without trace? That is incredible. As he takes on his biggest deal to date. This potentially could be disastrous if I get this wrong. Welcome to the world of posh porn. The pawnbroking business in the UK is worth nearly a billion pounds a year. Can't complain, can we? No, although we will give it a go. These go-to high street cash lenders have to make decisions fast. When do you need funds by? <laughs> Today. And any mistakes can cost them dearly. There's a good chance that all the bags that she sold yeah. are fake. So it could be thousands of thousands of pounds worth of shit. James Constantino has carved a niche for himself in designer pawnbroking. The sun is now breaking out, so this is what it's all about. It ain't all fun. Don't think that's fun. What? And he attributes his success to one thing. I'm a control freak, there's no doubt about it. I find it really difficult to delegate. I'll be gone at three. You can't, Joe, you can't. You've got I things am. to take. You can't, Joe. James, there's I've things made that need doing. James really can't stand losing control. You're a stubborn little bugger. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. You're more stubborn than me, and that takes no, some not. doing. Well, I think that's an area I'm gonna have to help him with. Me. I always win the arguments, me. I always have the last word. Me, me, me. Me, 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 me. 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 I need to step back and rely on my staff a little bit more, but it's going to hurt. Good afternoon, Christine. It's the start of a new week, and the first calls of the day are already coming into the London office. Joe, this is interesting. We've got a lovely email here from a woman called Anna who makes jewellery to the stars. Oh, really? What sort of stars? Hollywood stars. Ooh! What Hollywood stars? I don't bloody know. <laughs> Might be something special for George Clooney and his new wife. Oh, it's all bespoke and uh, one off, so some really high end. She's all the diamonds are certificated. It looks really, really good. Actually, really impressive. And she wants to loan against uh, some of her stock. Yeah, they look nice, don't they? Quite unusual. Basically, Anna sounds like the ideal client for us. She's got a lot of stock, it's all high end, and she's looking for a big number. One of the reasons we're in Hatton Garden, so in that respect, she's perfect for us. Celebrity jeweller Anna de Costa has won awards for her uniquely designed pieces. I make my own collections and I also do bespoke private commissions for people as well. I made a big pair of emerald earrings that were worn at the Oscars and sold last year. They were over 100,000. Deliberately targeting the most exclusive end of the market, her jewellery has caught the eye of Hollywood glitterati. This is a picture of Lindsay Lohan. This is me with her there, she's wearing one of my one pendants. Same one that I've actually got. This was the piece that uh, Brad Pitt bought for Angelina Jolie. It's an 18 karat yellow gold bracelet. Um, it's set with uh, green savorites, which are her favorite color. It sold for a five figure sum. It was brilliant to know that my jewelry is in her personal collection. But her current success has been hard earned. Hello, Anna. How are you doing? Fine, thanks. I took quite a lot of risks, so I worked four different jobs. Thank you. I took out a personal loan, which I paid back over five years and almost killed me. Happy days. I guess you want to bill me now. <laughs> if I knew how hard it was going to be in terms of sacrifice that you make, I probably wouldn't have done it. Anna now has a new passion in her life that competes for her attention, her one-year-old son, Barney. Yeah. Is that you, silly Billy? Is that you when you're little? A self-confessed workaholic, Anna has had to adjust her work-life balance. I did take time out with Barney, but even when I was in labour with him, I was still working. Now Anna's ready to launch her first collection since Barney's arrival, but in order to do this and grow the business, she needs a loan from James. I've got to make the business a success and support my family. And she's going to use some of her own pieces to raise the funds. 
This is the last collection that I made. It's based on henna designs uh, and features lots of paisley motifs like you can see here in these earrings. These are natural cognac diamonds. They were cut to spec for me because they were so bespoke. They're tasteful designs, but they, they do have a little bit of wow factor. That's, that goes with the glamour of the jewellery. I'm looking for around 75 to 100,000, and that's going to be used to grow my international presence. Now's a good time for me to start doing all this because I feel like I've come full circle, I've had my baby, so it's time to really sort of like start focusing on the future. The Hatton Garden branch is up and running and newly recruited manager Olga is making quite an impression. We have a new member of staff, Olga, who is quite different actually to the staff that I'm used to. She's coming from a schoolmistress background which is good, I'm a bit scared, actually, because she's sitting there. And if you hold it there... I know how to do it. Clients could be difficult. Some of them, they might behave like children, and then you have to be really strict and try to bring them in a line. Goodbye. Olga seems very um, professional. She's always very, um, you know, uh, sort of... Um, well, how can I put it? Hopefully I'm learning, and I still feel myself served, <laughs> but I don't mind. From time to time, I glance over at Olga just to keep an eye on her, and I can see her looking back at me, but I pretend it's uh, just something I'm looking at behind her. Every time I looked up, I felt he was watching me. Oh, it's natural, he's a new person, and he... But I think I'm getting used to his sense of humour, yes. All right, what do you got? Shall we start with this? Oops. An empty box. <laughs> box, sorry. She seems to be coping quite well. She's only on her second packet of Prozac. Prestige. Few things divert James's attention from the staffing more than the prospect of a good deal. Joe, yeah. come and have a look at this. Look, this is amazing. And they don't get any bigger than this. This fella is getting rid of his submarine. Jesus! Wow! It's uh, used for tourism, goes underwater, oh obviously, God, being it's... a submarine. That's much bigger than I thought. Yeah, I often get that said. Yeah, right. You need little dreams. <laughs> When I first saw the images of the submarine, it was absolutely ridiculous. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It's the world's most oh, sophisticated high-tech tourist submarine. Yeah. Actually, it is amazing, but who's going to want that? Well, why do you I, I, have to put I think skin that's on going it? beyond our. It's two million quid. I don't know. Nearly. That's not. So how much? Two million quid. It's two million quid. It's a lot of lolly, but it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of sub. This potentially could be disastrous if I get this wrong, but to be honest with you, I'm so excited about it, I just don't care at the moment. It sounds a lot of money too. Who do you know that would want a submarine? I've got marine specialists that might want to look at it. Jo wasn't quite as enthusiastic about the submarine as I was. She thought it was a dead duck, but I really wanted to bring a buyer to the table. It's pretty uncomfortable seats in the inside, isn't it? Lanzarote, Canary Islands, home to 61-year-old submarine owner, Paul. All right, all right, have a good one. I've worked very hard to achieve what I've got. Yeah, we, we, we are very successful. He moved to the island with his wife, Mandy, 17 years ago. On the bed, there's some new T-shirts. Go and put a T-shirt on. She packed them all. It's horrible. <laughs> it's like Crime Dad's shirt. He bought that, I never bought that. Paul's built up a submarine tourist business from scratch. Welcome to uh, my world. This is my office. As you can see, it's uh, reasonably pleasant, especially the weather. He's been responsible for transporting nearly a million passengers to date. We do nine dives over the summer, normally in July and August. 44 people, that's 350 people a day. Let you guys do the maths. Hey, people. Running a successful tourist attraction on the island has made Paul Cash rich. Submarine safaris, I would say, is one of the uh, most popular excursions on the island. But time poor. I would say he's a workaholic, definitely. Jack, come here. He's always so stressed. Come here. After 17 years of a gruelling six-day-a-week schedule, Paul feels it's time for work to take a back seat. I would like to slow down. Sometimes I pray for Sundays, if Sunday is my day off. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not liking that because Mandy, my wife, tends to have a list of jobs. You clean the pool and I'll make us a gin tonic. All right. Okay. A deal. I'll okay. go and change. It would be nice to have 
more time to travel together, to see Paul relax, really, and enjoy our retirement. He's a much nicer person when he's relaxed. Oh, gosh, that's a bit much. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, sweets. Happy holidays. To fund his retirement, Paul is looking to sell one of his biggest assets, a submarine. This is Nemo. This is a submarine we've actually got for sale. Uh, she's in a state of being refitted. It uh, weighs 100 tonnes. Fortunately, uh, they have a, a crane here that can lift her. But renovating submarines doesn't come cheap, especially when everything is bespoke or tailor-made. The budget I've set is around about €700,000. We don't have pension plans, see? So this is it. It's, it's like people have houses, we have submarines. The asking price is 1.8 million euros. For James, it's not going to be an easy thing to sell. There is somebody out there that wants one. How we or James links up with that person is a challenge for him, and uh, if he succeeds, then we're all going to be happy. So the pressure is now on for James to pull off his biggest ever deal. The new flagship store is in its first month of opening, but there are still a few teething problems. She's gone through four toilet roll holders. She keeps catching them on herself as she bends over. Cost me 36 quid in toilet roll holders. The so cloakroom far. area's become a bit crowded. <laughs> the three branches are pulling in business, but staff are feeling under pressure. Got a big bag of bags. Big, big bag of bags. We've got loads of stuff. So there's eight bags there. Literally, as we walked in, the phones started ringing yes. <laughs> and they haven't started. Good afternoon, Prestige. Kristen speaking. Now left in charge of the Weybridge branch, JMO is struggling to keep up with demand. Everything's just falling around from me. You know, there's just paperwork coming out from the road. I've got this to sort out, I've got this to get through. James is having to come to terms with the fact that delegation isn't a dirty word. Being based in Surrey, obviously I was in control and I had like my finger in almost every pie, but I was very hands-on. But here it's very different because I've had to relinquish a little bit of control to some of the other staff and it doesn't fit very well with me, I must admit. I have had a few sleepless nights. Lawrence is at the Weybridge store helping to clear the backlog as an intriguing item comes through the door. This is a autographed guitar by the Sex Pistols. Woo, you don't see one of those around. All compliments of signatures yeah. as well. It's pretty rare. They used to love the Sex Pistols. We've had that, never mind the Bollocks album. So you've got, you've got Sid Vicious. Absolutely. Well, that's the signature that well, that's is the, the one. desirable one. Two things. Yeah. One, I've only ever seen it in Biro. Yeah. And secondly, I've never seen it with Vicious. It's always been the Sid. Absolutely. So that is really rare. Fantastic. So how'd you get hold of it? What's the story behind it? And this one was actually signed at a Texas radio station. Yeah. And it's got um, all the letters and everything, yeah. which I, I would get for you. Fantastic. It proves all the provenance. It, it comes from a very prominent dealer as well, yeah. so it's not as if I picked it up from anywhere and I used to trust the person. And what sort of money are you looking for? Somewhere around eight to 10,000. Well, we're gonna do our best for you. Thank you very much, appreciate all right, it. All so about a week or 10 days, we'll give you a call. Cheers. Cheers. See you soon. Will do. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. The owner of the guitar is Gary, a collector of iconic rock star autographs. My signed collection of guitars includes the Sex Pistols, Green Day, Nirvana. And so I actually have Curtis here written on the guitar. Absolute legend. That, to me, it means the world. The Ramones, a $50 gold seal guitar. It's got the most discreet little signature on the bottom there of the great man himself, Jim Morrison. The most amazing guitar because of that. Once a high-flying businessman, Gary built up his collection at a time when money was no object. The company I had was a recruitment staff providing company, which I started, ended up being very, very, very successful. And it went from really being who I am, which is your average boy next door, to making money which was like astronomical. It was truly living the dream. And here we are. Isn't that an amazing house? Seven years ago, Gary called this million pound mansion home. Gosh, that brings back a lot of memories, I have to tell you. But two years later, Gary's business collapsed and he lost everything. 
the ending was as sudden as the start was as rapid. It took a little time for it to sink in what had actually happened. My house had to go. The financial institutions froze our accounts for nearly five months and it destroyed us. Neither his business or his marriage survived. This is it, this is home now. It was a question of just accepting where I am. This is a big difference, I used to have a housekeeper and I used to have someone that used to turn up at eight in the morning and leave at five in the evening and did everything. I mean, I didn't even go shopping. I mean, it was really pathetic. You just have to find your new level in life and then decide what you still want to aim for and achieve. I've been really working on this very, very hard now for a while. Now Gary is working alongside a new team, hoping to start over with a different business project. I can't say too much about it because it's so simple. If it worked, the analogy to use would be like the man that invented cat size for the motorways. I'm looking at the moment to raise enough money that can actually get my business venture up and running. Um, I need approximately 10,000 pounds. For a serious collector, this guitar represents something of the holy grail. Pawnbrokers are often used as a means to an end. Yes? How long does he need the money for? The combination of a growing business and new staff means James is constantly on the go. <laughs> and he's relying on his unique sense of humour to get him through. Listen, I think we're a bit snowed under if the truth be known. <laughs> and you in particular, dealing with three branches, and you need to unload some of the stuff, because you find it hard to let go. <laughs> You're cracking up a bit. I'm all right. I can cope. <laughs> Why don't you give um, Olga Anna de Costa's jewellery? All right. That's nice high-end stuff. Quite a big one, that. Well, so what? You've got to learn to do that a bit more, because you're not going to be able to do as much with the three stores now as you were. No, seriously, all right, I will. Yeah? Oh, my God, I think I am ready to. Jewellery designer Anna de Costa is looking for a loan to turn a business dream into a reality. Hi. Good afternoon. Hello. How can I help you? I've got um, a collection of jewellery that I've been looking to loan against. We can have a look at it. So it's all um, pieces that I've designed and made. Oh, my word. Oh. <gasps> I'm actually overwhelmed. <laughs> I don't know what to say. In a good way? Yes, in a good way, yes, yes. Do you take commission? I've done like specific pieces for Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. Really? Yeah. Exciting. Yeah, it's exciting, you know. How much money are you looking to get as a loan? Um, between 75 and 100,000. Okay. So you can say if it's a nice stone, it just shines from a distance. Yeah, yeah. The white metal, it's all platinum. Wow, unusual. <laughs> Make okay. sure you try some on. Can I? Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Bye. You Thank you very much. Thank you, Anna. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Well, it was nice to see Olga very impressed by it when she opened the box, which is always um, a good reaction. I know what the value is retail, so, yeah, I'm hoping that I'm going to get sort of roughly that amount for a loan. I love Blink. It's one of my weaknesses. <laughs> Must confess. James has been focusing his attention on the Hatton Garden store. Yes, yeah, so this is the best, yeah. Cheers, Olga, thanks. Yeah. But he's heard that a bulky delivery of 11 boxes of stamps is causing problems at the Weybridge branch and has decided to make an impromptu visit. I think JMO is struggling with the extra clients that are coming through the door at Weybridge and as such, I've got to keep an eye on him. Hi, James. How are you doing? How are you? you OK? Yeah, not bad. Did you want to see this what? new uh, array of...? These are the stamps, are they? <laughs> Why yes. did we get them in? Good question. Isn't it fun, isn't it, what we have to deal with every day? Oh, no. They're clogging up this place, aren't they? We've got to back them away. It kind of looks like we're moving. We're not shutting down, are we? No, it looks like we're having a sort of sale on or something. A sort of brick <laughs> a brack. Are they worth anything? Well, we got possibly a potential offer of maybe a five for each folder or something. OK. You know, there's a, thousands. Oh. Uh, not best worrying about that one. Someone in their wisdom has decided to take in a load of stamps and ask the client to deliver them, and there's just boxes and boxes of uh, stamps that don't seem to be worth a great deal of money, so it's a bit frustrating. That's not really the process. I've only been away a week, you know, and it's all gone to pot. I don't quite get it, but that's just the way it goes. If you don't keep your finger on the pulse, unfortunately, these things happen. <laughs> Good afternoon, Prestige. 
There may be a lot of change about, but one area of the business always feels like home to James, and that's cars. I'm like a big kid in a sweet shop when I'm, I'm here, to be honest with you. We've got Bentleys, Ferraris, so I've died and gone to heaven, basically. Patrick's just picked up an inquiry for a loan on a supercar, and it's a deal that's right up James's street. It's got a Ferrari F355 Spider, 1996. Uh, they're quite collectible. What's he want to do? Uh, what's a loan? All right. Bit down Cheers. Three or four years ago, the 355 actually wasn't very desirable. Um, but what's happening is that stuff from the late 80s, early 90s now, in Ferrari terms, is becoming quite a a rare thing and uh, people are buying it as an investment and it's driven the prices up. The owner of the Ferrari is 34-year-old Azim. He loves driving so much, he's made a career of it. <laughs> Take a seat in the car. Come and join me. So when you're ready, I want you to find your biting point, clutch down. OK, so clutch. It's going to take you a long time to find the biting point, though, isn't it? Mm. Why is that? Oh, I'm not on gear. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I think. Owning a Ferrari Spider was Azim's lifelong ambition. I was about seven, eight years old. I remember playing the computer game, and uh, I remember they had a Ferrari on that. And I just looked at that car game, and I really wanted it. And that was at the time that I decided that I want the actual car for real. Unfortunately, the reality hasn't quite lived up to his dream. You're not in cool Miami, and it's not a TV show, you know. You're, you're in the traffic on uh, St John's Hill in Wandsworth, you know, outside a chicken shop. People will just sometimes be a bit mean and not let you outside of a T-junction, you know. When I'm in my little learner car, oh, go on, little cute Fiat, in the Ferrari, you rich so-and-so. For the last two years, Azim and his wife Zara have been living with his parents, but with a baby on the way, the couple want their own space as soon as possible. We found our little dream house, picket fence, garage, you know, little garden, all of that stuff. It just means everything. If we don't get this, I'm really afraid that we won't be able to get our house. Hopefully it'll be fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. Just, just to secure a deal on the house, Azim and Zara need a short-term loan of £18,000. I want to get this done quite quickly, so... No pressure. No pressure, yeah. But putting the Ferrari up as collateral is proving quite a wrench for Azim. It does mean a lot to him. It's something, it was his dream, and it's a sense of achievement, in a way. It is, When though, you've worked yeah. really hard for something you've wanted all your life to finally have it, it's like a symbol of you know, everything that you've done. So it does mean a lot to him, and it means a lot to me that he's, he's willing to do this, you know, for, to buy what we want to do and for our future. I think I'm missing my car already. At the Hatton Garden branch, Joe is left holding the reins as James heads off to Lanzarote to check out the submarine. James is always swanning off somewhere, if not abroad, right in the middle of when we're really busy or something new's happening or I'm short-staffed. And there's me, left working away. The thing with this one is, you know, when you get people say, you can't do that or how are you going to find a buyer for that, Really, that spurs me on to get the deal done. When someone says you can't, I like to prove them wrong. Jo's, uh, you know, she's a bit cautious. She's a bit of a steady eddy, to be honest with you. And, like, you know, she always gets a little bit fearful when it comes to some of these bigger deals. But, you know, that's what we're here for at the end of the day. This could be one of the biggest deals to date. I'm really, really excited about seeing this thing. It looks absolutely amazing. Wow. Paul, hi, mate. Ah, James. That is absolutely amazing. This is it, is it? Nice to meet you. Welcome to Lanzarote and welcome to Nima. <laughs> That's incredible. When I first saw the submarine docked in the flesh, it was absolutely amazing. I had no idea of the scale of the thing. It weighs 106 tonnes. She's about 18 and a half metres in length. She's about 5.1 metres high and 3.5 metres, 4 metres wide. As you see, this Nemo is work in progress. We should be finished the refit in about eight weeks' time. In the meantime, we've got Subfund Trez. She's diving today, and we'd like to invite you on board. Fantastic. OK, mate, where are we going? Down to the marina? Yeah, it's this way. Follow Fantastic, me. Fantastic, thanks. Nice. When I first clapped eyes on the submarine, I realised the scale of the thing, and I did wonder if I'd bitten off more than I could chew. Oh, 
pawnbrokers have to be ready to put a price on any and every item that comes through the door. But when it comes to valuing a submarine, James knows he's got his work cut out. Dealing with a submarine is going to be really difficult. It's not something I can handle by myself. I've got all hands to the deck. Keen to get started with research, James has already got Jamo and Lawrence on the case in the UK. But this is just completely out of the ocean, this one. This is a submarine. So we've got to do a bit of research on this and see if we can find these buyers as well. I mean, who are we going to approach? Do I try yellow pages? Under just buy subs. Under submarine dealers. I don't know. Good afternoon. Uh, my name's Jamo, calling from Prestige Pawnbrokers, and we've got a client who wishes to sell a 48 person sub. So I don't know if you can give me a call, because we're looking to try and value this particular item. Thank you. Not that off my list. <laughs> Fire torpedo! Inquiry out. In Lanzarote, James heads out for a test ride in an identical submarine to the one that could potentially make him a fortune. This is one that's actually in working operation. Her name is Subfantrez. Absolutely stunning. That's yes. amazing. She is. How much is this one worth? If you wanted to buy a new one today, it's about four million. So obviously Nemo is a little bit of a bargain. The numbers are important, as Prestige stands to gain a substantial fee if they sell the sub. Okay then, James, we're gonna put you in the co-pilot seat today. This is Ankle, the captain. Oh yeah. And, uh, okay. Wow. This is amazing. Okay. okay, we're going down now. You can see on the monitor there, the uh, deck is flooding. You see the air coming out. These are the soft ballast tanks where all the air comes out and it's replaced by water. And now you can just see the camera now, with the, which is the tallest bit of the uh, sub, just going under the water now. Now uh, we're fully submersed and on our way to the bottom. As we started to sink underwater, my heart started to flutter. I couldn't believe it. It was another world down there. It was like being in outer space. That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. It is, isn't it? I've never experienced anything like it. It's, it's no, brilliant. Uh, as you go deeper, the marine life will increase. We normally go down to 27 metres where there's a wreck. Sometimes we have this huge, huge manta ray. If she's going to be anywhere, she'll be by that wreck waiting. Can you see oh, yeah, a yeah. little spot? Oh, yeah, yeah. And what yeah, is it? It's an old wreck. Oh, wow. Look. That's quite eerie, isn't it? This is yeah. the ship you were talking yeah. about. It's a big old wreck. You wow, see? look at that. That is incredible. Yeah, the bridge has just fallen in. It's it was, yeah, it's all collapsed because the hull is wood, but the bridge is all steel. Oh, look! Look, the manta ray! Come, come, come! The manta ray is coming! Oh, wow! That's manta ray. That is manta ray. That is amazing. It's amazing to see. It's so lucky to see that. Yeah, very, very lucky. I was absolutely blown away with what I saw down there, but I had to remind myself I was there to do some business, but it was very, very difficult. OK, Uncle, we better head home. No, I think it's fantastic, man. It's such an, it's a, as you said, it's a once-in-a-lifetime experience, isn't it? The whole experience of going down in the sub really did help me understand the value of that thing, and it really is an amazing bit of kit. There must be someone out there for it. OK, we're going to go out the aft hatch. As they head towards dry land, James's business head kicks back in. OK, James, I hope we've uh, shown you exactly what we're able to uh, offer uh, a potential purchaser of Nemo. Yeah. And it's been a pleasure to meet you. Thanks, and Paul. And a pleasure to show yeah, you. Yeah, it's really. been fantastic. I'll get back to England, I'll do some sums, and if I need any more information, I'll come back to you, but we'll try and uh, get something together for you. Thanks. Cheers, Paul. Thanks. Cheers, James. All the best. Take care. It's to sell a submarine in this economic climate is not easy by any stretch of the imagination, but it's my job now to go back to London and see what I can do. It's not going to be easy, but I'm going to give it a go. In the UK, Lawrence has been checking the provenance of Gary's signed Sex Pistols guitar. Well, it isn't looking good. Um, I've spoken to at least eight or nine people now, and they all seem to be of the same opinion. But I am going to keep on. If it's fake, we'll find out it's fake. We're very good at it. Rock memorabilia is notoriously difficult to authenticate, so Lawrence has decided to give the signatures another check. 
We're off to see Mark. He's one of the top people in the country for any memorabilia, autographs, especially music. He's the number one guy. Well, what I'm hoping is if this is a genuine guitar and it's signed by all the Sex Pistols, especially Sid Vicious, we're talking about 20 grand plus, and that could be life changing to Gary. Hello, Mark. Hi, Lawrence. How are you doing? All right, mate. All right. I'm just like that now. Well, this is actually bought by a client of ours called Gary. I've got a few concerns about it, but obviously that's why I brought it down here. This could be a hell of a lot of money, so yeah. I don't want to get it wrong. Just standing here looking at this now, I don't think the, the signature at all is authentic. The biggest mistake there is signing it in what they call a Sharpie pen that definitely wasn't around of when that was, should have been signed. <laughs> I've only ever seen Sid Vicious in a biro pen. Yeah. And to get it on an item like that, that would be worth thousands and thousands of pounds. I mean, saying all that, but obviously he has got a certificate. A certificate? is as good as the person who's issued it. Yeah. Is there any way he can get his money back? If it's a good standing company, they won't have yeah. no problems. But these days, you've got to be extra careful. Yeah. Check before you buy. Yeah. In Hatton Garden, Olga's keen not to make a mistake on her first big deal. She's taking Anna's bespoke jewellery to a specialist valuer. It's the first time she's visited Ian, one of James's most trusted experts. Ian, hello. 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 How are you? I'm all right. I'm all good. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Carrying a bag. Is it exciting? It is. It is. Yes. It well, is let's exciting. have a look at it. Nice box. Mm, very nice box. <laughs> mm, diamond. All these pieces were brought to me by Anna. She's a jewelry designer. She's got very special clientele, Brad Pitt and uh, Angelina Jolie. So where's Brad Pitt now? Send him here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he won't yeah, escape. No. The quality of workmanship is good. Yeah. You know, you can't fault the workmanship. These are hand-finished pieces, Absolutely. which is important, you know? She said for this she wants to get a loan to take her business further. I think she's doing the right thing. I think there's quality there. You can't fault the quality of work. Yeah. You can't fault the quality of stone. Money-wise, well, there's money there, but you have to find the right niche for it. Thank you very much. You take care of yourself. I will. And okay. Well. Thank Thanks. You. Bye, -bye. Bye. I haven't met him before, and I think he's um, quite a character. My estimate was right. This is the first assignment that James gave me. I hope you'll be pleased with the results. James has just arrived back at the Hatton Garden branch from Lanzarote, but the welcome isn't quite what he's expecting. What's going on with this buzzer? Does anyone hear a buzzer? You know the buzzer we had put in? Don't be so ridiculous. That buzzer, does that buzzer work? Oh, welcome back, James. It's a delight to have you back in the office. Oh. Such a pleasant, pleasant greeting. I think James was a bit gutted when he returned from the submarine trip because we were so busy, we didn't even notice that he'd come in the door. I've had a lovely time. Well, you wouldn't think so about that entrance. Yeah, I went on a submarine underwater. It was amazing. It was an incredible experience. It went down amongst shipwrecks and all sorts, and we saw this, this manta ray. James, please tell me we're not dealing with that effing submarine. We are dealing with the effing submarine, because the effing submarine potentially could earn us a lot of money. I've passed it on to the boys to yeah. have a little go at. Do you know what? You've set something going there. They both can't wait to try and do it, do the sale. Why don't you make it a little competition between the three of you? What well, first one to sell it gets a free subway. Why not? At the Richmond branch, Lawrence is feeling confident that he'll have the upper hand when it comes to the submarine research. Hello, my name's Lawrence. I work for a company called Prestige. We've got, we've got a submarine we're trying to sell. It's not a massive sub, it's about 106 tonnes. Would it be something you'd be interested in? No problem at all. Thanks for your time. Now, I've got a bit of a competition coming with JMO on who's actually going to sell the submarine. Put him in front of watches, cars, brilliant at them. Something like this, I don't think you can think out of the box enough. So, no competition to me at all. In Weybridge, JMO is hard at it, and it looks like he might be onto something. Wait, wait. Uh, yeah, thanks for that. I really appreciate you responding to my email. Speak soon, thanks. Bye. Well, that was really exciting, because this client is absolutely jumping out the bit, and it's going to be possibly the biggest ticket item sell put through Prestige. It'd be brilliant if it was me that put it through.
I think I'm gonna have to let Lawrence down very gently and just let him know that I think I've got this one right in my net. Getting a correct valuation often depends on meticulous research, and with an estimated 90% of online rock memorabilia being fake, Lawrence has reached a conclusion about Gary's signed Sex Pistols guitar. Well, I'm just about to ring Gary. We've had a few people look at his guitar, uh, three memorabilia experts and an auctioneer, and I got a result for him. It's like you're waiting for exam day for the actual results. Hello, Gary speaking. Hello, Gary. It's Lawrence from Prestige. Oh, hi, Lawrence. How are you? I'm fine. I think you've been sort of waiting and been worrying a bit. Waiting for this phone call. Absolutely. I mean, you know... I was really excited when you bought it in the shop. It really is an unusual item. How much did you pay for it? Um, about 5000 at the time. Well, I've been very, very concise on this one because, obviously, it is an unusual item. Um, I took it to... It's a specialist um, auction house that deal in memorabilia. Wow, OK. Um, I then took it to... Mark, our top expert. So he wants to make sure they've got all our facts right. Um, unfortunately, Gary, they won't authenticate it. Really? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Um, on what grounds? Because, obviously, it's come from very proven provenance. The problems you got with it are, according to our expert, Sharpie, which is a permanent pen, right? And all the autographs are sort of around that period. I mean, Sid Vicious um, always signed in buyer onto paper or to magazines, right? Um, obviously, you knew about the picture. It's, you know, it's a very amateur mistake or something like that. They're going to charge you five thousand for, and they get the wrong person. Uh, Sid Vicious isn't actually in the picture. It's Matlock um, who he replaced. Yeah, yeah. Um, under the same opinion that the signatures are all in the same hand. Is it possible to have um, a copy of that um, report? Because um, obviously the, the place I got it from, um, if I present that to them, I will get my money back. Mark um, is quite happy to actually um, put you in touch with AFTOL, which is the Autograph Fair Trade Association. Right. And they have a nine out of ten success rate of getting people's money back. Right. I mean, you get the other guitars in the same place. Absolutely. So then obviously they would then fight the case for you to get all your money back if they weren't happy with the other guitars as well. Right. Gosh, that's uh, quite an eye-opener this morning. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you weigh it up, um, it is quite damning, so thank you for that. No problem at all. So I'll call you later and we'll sort out the details on AFTOL. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Lawrence. No worries. Look after yourself, Gary. Cheers, mate. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye. AFTOL. I've got a very big success rate, so hand it over to them and hopefully they'll get the money back and all sorted out for him. I'd want them all to be going back um, at um, the dealership's um, expense and getting a full refund on the whole lot. So one way or the other, I'll still get my money in order to carry on to get my new business going. I was really upset that the guitar was a fake. Fortunately, on this occasion, we managed to put him in touch with an organisation which would help him get his money back, and that's a good feeling. As a high-end pawnbroker, James regularly jets off to foreign climes to assess valuable items. Jo's making it her mission to be included on the next trip. I've been learning Spanish. Shall I tell you something? No. Hey, James. El limón de candela, sí, a la tola mala. See, Mr. James. See. But James's attention is drawn to an inquiry that's dropped into his inbox. Uh, hi. As you can see, I've got this sword which belonged to a previous president of Iraq, Saddam Hussein. Are you getting this? It's gold with diamonds on it, apparently. Well, how do we know it belonged to him? We're well, going to have to fly out there. <laughs> yeah, you'd send me into the war zone, but I can't go to Lanzarote and get in a submarine. You're going to have to put a flat jacket on and get yourself a pair of steel toe cap flip flops and get yourself out there. Okay, lovely. Yeah. And who's getting the next Spain trip? <laughs> That'd be me, probably. <laughs> it's the moment of truth for Olga's first big deal. Jewellery designer Anna de Costa's hoping to get the green light for a £75,000 loan for her bespoke collection. 
Olga's done the research, but will James agree with the valuation? Oh, hi. hi. You all right? Hi, yeah, how are you doing? How are you? Grab a seat. Thank you. <coughs> how have you been? Good, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Well, look, the pieces are beautiful, as you probably know, because they're yours. <laughs> thank you. Um, and I think, Olga, you were quite impressed, weren't you? I know when I see lovely pieces, it just takes your breath away. Well, look, we've done some work, and it's really difficult because the normally what we would do is we would take the value of the stones, take the value of the metal, and come up with um, a figure. But with these pieces, we realise that so much has gone into actually making the pieces that there's a lot of value in that alone. So we have got a figure for you. Okay. And the figure that we can get to is 75,000. Okay. If that's, if that's yeah, any no, good. Yeah, no, that's to you. really good. Yeah, yeah. Is that yeah. all right? No, that's brilliant. Thank Are you. Are you happy with that? Yep, yeah, I am very happy. Okay, Thank good. You. Thanks for coming in today. That's all right, no problem. It's Thank been you. a pleasure to see you, and we'll that's get great. it all done and yep. dusted and Thank sent you. over to you. Really Thanks. enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you very much. Bye. 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 Well done. Thank you. Yeah, well done. Good. It's brilliant. I've got the money that I was looking for. Happiness on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the happiest. Uh, obviously, over 10. Maybe 12. Off the scale, I can make my pearl pieces, which I'm really excited about, and do all the things I wanted to do in the business for the years ahead. Job done. Client is happy. We can just move on and make another one happy. <laughs> James is heading off to south-west London to visit Azim. He's waiting for news on whether a loan on his Ferrari Spider will be enough to fund his first family home. It's quite a rare thing being black um, and a Spider. They only made uh, 2,600. Let's go and have a look at it. Let's get in it, let's rev it up a little bit, let's sniff it and see what happens. How are you doing, Azim? I'm all right, James. Nice to meet you. How are you? I'm all right. What do you think? Yeah, smart. I like it. Are these the original wheels? I don't think I've ever seen a black one. Haven't you? What year is it? 96. 96. Yeah. Proper old school Ferrari, yeah. last of the proper, proper V8 ones. muscle, yeah. I just got this thing about sniffing them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when I, I had one of these, well, I had to get rid of one because um, well, people used to sort of hurl abuse at me and uh, call me. I think it was to do with a car. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it might have been something, it might have been my hair or the, uh, the clothes I had on or something like that. Are we going to get to hear it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Come on. laughs> Even I get excited when I get behind the wheel of a fast car, but not quite as excited as Azim seemed to. James is hoping that his loan offer will hit the mark for Azim but will it be the £18,000 he needs so badly? It's got a couple of little marks on it here and there. I mean, I've done a lot of research. I was quite surprised at the values and how they've gone over the last couple of years. Possibly this is around the 45, 50 grand mark, I would have thought. Yeah. And uh, your 18 grand, mate, isn't really an issue. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, deal. OK. Nice one, Azim. I can actually relate to someone getting emotional over saying goodbye to their car. I've owned a few cars in my time and you do get attached to them. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, James. Thanks. Appreciate and the car was everything I thought it was going to be. In automotive terms, that is the dog's doodars. Now that I get the money, I can get the house that we want, or the pretty house with a little picket fence and a garage. And, um, you know, a pregnant wife has a, you know, have a roof on her head. Sometimes you have to give up a boy toy, man up and do what's right for your family. It looked like he was going to break down a couple of times. I did feel I wanted to give him a little cuddle. I know how difficult it is to change the Ferrari for a people carrier. It's called going through the change, and I've been there myself. It's not an easy process. It was nice. Weybridge office, James is preparing to make a call about a deal worth nearly one and a half million pounds. Right, babe, should we get these cases sorted? For Paul and wife Mandy, it's an anxious wait to find out whether James has managed to find a buyer with a submarine-sized bank balance. I can't wait to have the call and know what's happened and whether or not James has managed to, to find a buyer. Selling this type of submarine is, uh, is not an easy thing for anybody to do. It's really tested us all in terms of our research and our ability to appraise something. Hello, Paul speaking. Paul, hi, it's James here from Prestige. Hi, James. How are you? Yeah, not 
not bad. Paul, look, all the guys. And the team have been working their socks off on it. I can imagine. We've been phoning everyone around the world. And um, it's been by no means uh, an easy task to find someone for it. Yeah, fully aware on that one. But um, um, look, I have got some good news. Ooh. I've actually found someone for it, mate. <laughs> good. It was one of the guys. It wasn't actually me who found them, so I was a bit, uh, a bit <laughs> peeved. And they've located this uh, company that are chomping at the bit to uh, get over and get this deal done. So uh, in that respect, it's good news. They're serious people, um, and they've got cash ready to go. So in that respect, it's... And they know the price, do they? They know the price. Uh, and they haven't uh, bolted at that. They're based in America. Um, and they're keen to come over and get a deal done. And hopefully we can get this one away. I'm, 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 I'm confident on it. Let me know anything I can do. We'll sort, we'll sort it from there. All right. Thanks, James, for, thanks for your time, Paul. All the best. Thanks Cheers, for mate. the good news. Cheers. All the best. Bye. Bye-bye. He looks as if he might have sold it. Which is uh, totally amazing. It's good news, really. I was uh, not expecting it. That's brilliant, brilliant. You won't believe it. He's moved it. He's managed to uh, find a buyer. You're joking. Fantastic. <laughs> Jamo has worked his socks off on this, and uh, I take my hat off to him. You know, I mean, it's difficult enough to find a buyer for a watch uh, in this climate, let alone a, a two million euro submarine. Uh -huh, fantastic. Okay. Well done, James. Brilliant. It's a, a major coup for us. I think from my personal point of view, yeah, there is a little bit of a sigh of relief just to uh, have this one in the bag.